Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jason. I'm going to show you the must-haves for my new 9R. So here's the sled. It's a 24 9R Chaos 155 slash tunnel with the 325 Series 9 track. Zero miles. Haven't ridden it yet. But here's what I'm going to do to it. I would have done the exact same thing to my old sled. This is my Chaos 850 165, the two and three quarter inch track. This sled's for sale. If you're interested, check the link in the description. This sled's wicked, super responsive, playful, so fun. Only reason I'm upgrading, I wanted that 325 track. I wanted the lightweight crank and just a little bit more power. Okay, so here's my must-haves for this sled. So here we go. We're gonna put a spare belt in the holder. This is the ZRP brake master cylinder protector. We've got a skid plate from Polaris we're gonna throw on there. This is a lightweight silencer. This is from the sled shed, it's called The Thing. And you'll notice this interesting area here that's for the cooker i ordered a new cooker because the old one was starting to wear out a bit and then we're going to throw on the brant tunnel bag this is the eyes large it's definitely used you can see on our last ride we were riding in some mud at the very end going back to the cooker i mentioned that i ordered a new can and i just got it in the mail this is from boulder sled shed out of revelstoke great people to deal with and I noticed it had two things in the package I wasn't expecting so in the first paper bag we have the new cooker it's pretty sweet again this is a must-have for me because nothing beats a hot lunch when you're out there in the cold it's got a two-tiered tray so you can put your hors d'oeuvres at the top and you put your main entree in the bottom. It's a little taller. So this was a surprise. What was in the second bag? Was not expecting this. They threw in some little cooker trays. So you can prepare your meal the night before, throw in some leftovers. Get your food in there. That fits in the bottom. Perfect. So yeah, it's the little things. I was not expecting that, but man, that made me happy because I ran out of these. Um, this winter, I think I'm going to try to reuse them if they don't get burnt up too bad, like if you had spaghetti sauce that burns up or whatever. Um, yeah, stay tuned to my channel if you want to see some uh, snowmobile cooking by Jason. I'll be sharing my meals throughout the winter. It's actually a huge deal for me. And that's pretty much it for must-haves for me. I run my sleds basically bone stock. They are so good these days. You don't really have to add much more to them. Okay, one other thing I'd add. Not really a must-have. Take off that gas cap and get yourself one of these from Powder Freaks. Out of BC. Why, you ask? Well, somewhere to put your cream soda. This is the wide version that'll hold a Powerade bottle too. Right, hands-free. Hands-free cream soda. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is put on this protector for the master cylinder. So you're gonna need a Torx 30, and that's gonna help you adjust your brake lever to where you want it, like the proper angle. The dealer set it a little high for my liking, so we're going to put that down. And then it uses these little bolts, which is a 5 millimeter hex or Allen. For a scratch in it. I'm a trigger finger brake operator. Some of you guys use their middle finger. I like the first finger, so I want to move my brake in a little bit. 
go. There. On the 850, I ended up moving the reverse in just to protect it. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing on the new one. There it is. So I moved the reverse switch from here to over here. And I just thought if a tree or a branch or something came this way, it would maybe glance off the protector and not knock that reverse switch right off and break it. I just gotta put my wire straps back on. Next up is this tone bag. Slides in there. Looks like we're gonna use these rear tunnel spots here. It's pre-drilled from underneath, so I just have to poke a couple holes and we'll put the mounts on. Okay, so underneath here, under the tunnel, you can see where there's two holes. Here and here. It's gonna puncture that. Poke goes through. A little screwdriver. Slip that one. There's another one. Cut through. Let me put these little mounts on. With a 16 inch wrench. tight for now and if the bag doesn't fit on them quite right I can move them around a bit. Oh yeah, never mind. I just had too far forward. There. That is on there. Open it up. I'll have to put my other essentials in here a little later. Nice. Okay, next up, we're gonna put the skid plate on. So we're gonna have to pull the hood off. We're also gonna have to take this bolt out. Uh, it's a little tough getting underneath there. In the past, I would tip the sled right on its side, but you just gotta be careful because you might scratch your nice spindles and this part of your rail here. So I'm actually just gonna lift the sled up onto some blocks and lay on the ground and screw it in. There we go, a little higher off the ground. So this is the nut we gotta take off right here underneath the hood. You could, um, Put it on the inside but i just prefer putting it right on the outside like that pop it through put the nut back on these gloves are getting pretty worn out and there's no grip everything's so slippery you could probably could grab a new pair later so at the back of the skid plate here's the track you can see that there's some pre-drilled holes one two three and I'll show you where those come up through. You gotta be careful not to poke a hole in your cooler with your screws. So I'm gonna shine a flashlight through that hole. On the inside, you can see where that light's coming through. Okay. I don't like using those holes. The skid plate comes with self-tapping screws. And if you put it through those holes, the screws will just fall out within, you know, a few rides. It happened to me last year. I made a video about it. So I am just gonna use my drill driver and put those self-tapping screws just to the left of that hole. There's nothing there, it's not gonna hurt anything. And they stay in a lot better. You can see the three holes at the back, one, two, and three. The skid plate comes with those holes. And so I just pre-drilled some smaller holes just ahead of them. I'm gonna line up these bigger holes with the factory holes and just use the self-tapping screw and go right into that aluminum and they stay in there much better. Here we go. Put the screw in the hole, thread it in there a bit. Line it up. It's 
screw it in. Feels pretty good. So I just want to show you where those skid plate screws came through. You got to be really careful where you put them through. So you got to plan ahead. Uh, right in the middle, I don't think you see where the shining light is. That's where the hole was from factory. And I came in just ahead of it, straight ahead of it. And you should be fine. But just look in there ahead of time so that you're not going to hit anything. And all of a sudden you got an oil leak. And then there's where the other one came through. Okay, now we're gonna pull this stock muffler and put the new one on, the lightweight one. So first thing you're gonna wanna get is a spring puller. You're gonna need a 17 mil wrench to get this exhaust sensor off. I need a 13 mil as well, and I'll show you why in a little bit. And always safety glasses whenever you're pulling springs. That is tight. Pull a sensor, tuck it away. This pipe spring off. There's another one right here. Pull them off, don't let them fall in. That's it for that one. And then we got these other two up top here. Go at it from the front. Biggie. Pull that off. There we go. Pull it out. Separate it from the pipe first. Pull it out. Don't forget to take the rubber out and put it back in. Now that the muffler is out, we can see the engine a little better. So clean. There's that blue head of the 9R. Just checking the spark plugs on the 9R. They use the BPR9ES, just like the 850. All right, you're gonna put your rubber back in there. So it usually sticks to your silencer that you pull out. So just make sure you put it on there. Okay, we're gonna test fit the thing. So here's the sled shed, the thing, dusty, and drop it in. You'll notice that the pipe has to come down a fair ways to fit in. And usually that causes the pipe to touch the bumper right here and rub. It looks like we might get away with it. When I put the spring back on, it's probably gonna pull the pipe right up against the bumper here. If it does, I have a little trick. When you buy the thing, they send you some heat shielding tape, like a lot of it. Um, this is what was left after I put this pipe on my old sled, my 850. So we're gonna put a little bit on the bottle and then just on the inside to protect the plastic from. Sticky stuff. Probably pretty good. Okay, there we go. Heat shielding complete. Let's fire it up. Can't be forgetting the exhaust sensor though. Oh, won't fit. We need some more length. Just want to cut this zip tie. Fits in there now, and then I'll just tie up the slack in a sec. Not too tight, but tight. That's good.
so after starting it up, I noticed that that pipe is going to rub. It has moved just from idling it for a minute. So it's time for the pipe trick. So those were my top five must haves for my Polaris 9R. In my next video, I'll show you how to get more clearance between the pipe and the bumper so there's no rub. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss the video. Hit that like button and we'll see you in the next one. What you up to, man?